My worst problem is the severe constipation. And I mean severe. I go six, seven days without going. Six or seven days between bowel movements? Yes. Do you uh, have little bowel movements in between those six or days or no bowel movements? No bowel movements. And when I have a bowel movement, I swear to God, it's like 20 inches long. When we talk about constipation, we are basically talking about symptoms such as uh, infrequent stools, hard lumpy stools, a sense of incomplete evacuation, excessive straining. That's the definition of constipation. Now, OIC in particular, based on a definition created by a uh, multidisciplinary working group, is defined as those symptoms of constipation that occur in association after the initiation of an opioid. Why is it that patients get constipated on opioids? Well, because there are mu receptors in the peripheral nervous system as well, specifically lining the entire GI tract. There's a number of different opioid receptors throughout the GI tract, but the primary one that causes OIC that's responsible for those side effects is the mu receptor, the same receptor that's responsible for achieving analgesia. You know, and I find that in primary care, when you ask a clinician about constipation or even a patient, they talk about the number of stools that they have, and yet I find related to opioids that it's much more than just the number of stools. The fact that they have trouble straining, the fact that they feel bloated all the time, that they may not want to eat because they have upper GI symptoms, those are also opioid-induced constipation. The problem is, is that we don't ask very much in primary care. We don't ask because we don't want to hear the result, now we got to deal with it. And we don't ask because we don't feel like we have a lot of options for patients. We do, but I don't think we primary care clinicians know that there are so many options available. Uh, we see our local GI specialist using lubiprostone, but most of the pain doctors uh, who are either anesthesia or physical medicine and rehab by background are, are familiar with these opioid antagonist drugs. You call them the PEMORAs, the peripherally acting mu opioid receptor antagonists. And to me, that sounds kind of worrisome that you can you know, block the effects of the opioids. How do they work in constipation? So these medications, that PEMORAs, are intuitively the perfect medications for OIC. Now the way they work is that they compete for binding at the peripheral mu receptor. So they have a very poor or negligible exposure across the blood-brain barrier. So they're not competing for that analgesic effects from opioids, but they do compete peripherally. So basically they take the place of the opioid at that peripheral mu receptor and they reverse that, those OIC effects or, or those opioid effects on motility and secretion and absorption uh, that lead to OIC. So Susan, for some patients, this might be an embarrassing topic. Thank goodness you're very open with me. And we've always been open with each That's other. That's because I know you so well, yes. But there are some patients that might not talk to their doctors about the problem. What would you tell those patients? You have to tell your doctor. You should tell your doctor the truth about everything. So don't be embarrassed to talk about it. The only way because we can- normal, normal function of your body anyway. Of course. And obviously the only way we can help patients is if we know these symptoms are going on. Exactly. And I think doctors should always say when you're when they're ready to, when they're finished talking to the patient, to always say, is there anything else I can help you with? And normally then, the patient will come out and be more relaxed and say, oh, because if you can't go, you'd be in worse trouble. You just wish you could have a, you wish to God you were like a normal human being, go to the bathroom, flush the toilet, that's it. <laughs>